with that workflow, uh, I'd say um, the next biggest thing is the search, actually, in our organization. Um, this is for uh, both 2007 and 2010, and I'm talking about important considerations for web front end storage. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the IIS log space. Um, I'll tell you, when, when our environment was built, uh, they didn't take into the consideration how large those logs are. And when you start talking uh, 10, 20, 30,000 unique visitors getting to your web applications, those log files tend to get very large very fast. Okay? And if you don't have the proper amount of space, you can run into all kinds of problems. Uh, there's also SMTP logs that you have to look after. Uh, event viewer logs, plus space for the backups of those. And just in general, um, the CU files, or the, the, you know, the cumulative update files, uh, they tend to be, as you can see, each grouping, uh, they used to come, I'm not even sure if they come out, do they come out every quarter for 2007 anymore? Every two months for all products. Still for 2007? Yeah. Okay. So these are, but you can see they're about half a gig uh, altogether. And so they're coming out on a regular basis. So they are, are taking uh, storage space up if you're leaving them on the servers. Um, we have tend to, to, to left them on the servers just, um, I mean, you don't have to, but we tend to do that um, to kind of mirror our uh, our DR with our production. So if anything ever does happen, we do have duplications on both sides, and we have exact replicas of what is in PR and what is in DR. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, yeah, I'll get on to a little bit more about the IIS in a second. Uh, a paging file um, that you guys are probably aware of created during the boot up on the volume dictated. Uh, space is needed for this too. The larger environments, you're going to have a larger page file system. Uh, place it on its own physical disk rather than the Windows OS uh, files to reduce contention. It also speeds up response time. This is something that um, Microsoft has recommended for years and years, uh, putting the paging file on a different uh, disk. Um, something I've got in the habit of our environment actually doesn't always do this. I don't know why they do not do this, uh, but you'll see it typically larger companies, um, just insurance companies, for example, that I've used, I've worked in. Uh, they'll all, they'll all do this. Uh, place it on a separate disk just to help this speed up things. Um, and it also, if, if anything is ever damaged with an OS, for example, going corrupt, uh, things are all separated out. You know, you're, you're, you're uh, your page file, your OS, and your data, all on separate drives. Um, the other thing is defragment volatile volumes often, uh, especially when you're writing so much to it from the log files. Uh, you want to defrag this to keep the speed up. Okay, use the onboard Windows Disk Defragmenter and the scheduled task utilities or with a third-party application. Um, what, I, what I do is about, uh, I can do it more often, I guess, but about every two weeks I go through it. I have my offshore team do a defragment on all my front ends and application servers, just to keep the speed up. What's your thought on DiskKeeper as a product? Is it a I've used that investment? before. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, DiskKeeper is a good product. Um, I've never had any problems with it. I, yeah, it's a good you use product. it in your current environment? Though? No, we don't. Okay. We don't. But I, I, I have used it at uh, in my past environments with the Intranex, and it was uh, yeah, a good result too. Okay. Uh, the ULS logs. This is one of the, the big things um, that I found for larger environments. Uh, ULS logs are the first thing that Microsoft will ask you for. Um, if you phone up Microsoft, say I have a problem, uh, one of the first things they'll ask for. Can you send me a, a chunk of your ULS log? Your ULS log from this hour to this hour. When things go down or a web application goes down and you have these web uh, 
ULS log, they tend to get huge. And I'll give you a good example. Um, last week we had a, we were moving some content around at night. Uh, we had a brief outage, and start, things started getting written from to the ULS logs okay, before and after. The ULS log got up to 800 megs, and that's for a half an hour time frame. So when we're talking about 40 to, let's say, a gig uh, of space, and we're talking 12 entries, it could be 24 entries uh, per day, we're talking a lot about a lot of space being taken up on those web front ends. Okay? So that, that needs to be planned for right at the start. I mean, that's gigs and gigs of space, depending on how much you want to save. Okay? These are really handy. The longer you have a, a history of those, the better it is and easier it is to debug these large environments. Okay? So I would say for anybody, uh, right now I'm running about, um, I think about a month's history. I think I even be a little bit longer now uh, for the ULS logs. Okay? And again, I get uh, for a half hour period anywhere between 40 and that 800 I was talking. So, you know, you, if you get have some problems, you start running up these large UL, ULS logs, it can really suck up the space on your front ends. Um, the performance S logs... Sorry, yeah. so how big are your ULS logs with keep a month, to keep a month's worth of data? Gigs. Gigs, huh? and, gigs and gigs. Well, what, 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 what gigs and gigs? Are you 10 gigs? 50 gigs? I'd say about 12 gigs. So 12 zipped. Gigs. Press them, yeah. Zipped, yeah, even zipped. No, I zip they won't get that much. Yeah, you, you wouldn't think so, but it, it's what I do is, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about it too, is I'll use, I use the PowerShell and I compress them, zip them up, and ship them off it into their own directory per day. So if I do phone Microsoft, uh, I have it exactly per day, I can go in, unzip it, look at uh, a 24 hour period, and it's divided into half an hour increments. So I can narrow it down very fast, especially if I'm looking at something that's, you know, 100 meg to, let's say, 300 meg to go through it uh, is a little bit of a hassle. There are ULS viewers out there. I, I, I would say go and get one of those. Uh, there's a few of them out there. Use that to your advantage. It's really handy for going through these large, uh, very large log files. Um, the performance logs, not as big, obviously, um, but you want, again, I like keeping a, 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 a good span of them. Um, again, for, for debugging purposes, going back through things if you have to. Uh, on your front end, you're going to, typically in a large environment, you're going to have one or two types of monitoring tools, uh, agents that are on the front ends. These don't take up a lot of space. But again, you're going to get updates all the time to these things. Sometimes you're going to store the updates on there, sometimes not. Uh, but you want to uh, actually plan for that. Um, you can use BMC typically. Uh, our environment uses BMC a little bit. Uh, we also use a product out of uh, Belgium, actually, uh, called Servers Alive. And Servers Alive is, uh, if, if you've never checked it out, check it out. It's a pretty neat little product. Uh, it's been around for a number of years. Uh, the great thing about ser Servers Alive versus BMC or some of these other tools is the fact that they can actually run in a DMZ or internal. Okay? And they're agentless, which is really handy. Uh, the BMC, um, that product, we're just getting into it uh, using it on the intranet and the extranet, or sorry, the, the internet sites. Um, we always had a, a lot of problems with the BMC tool and the DMZ. Anyways, just for space purposes, that's something to plan out for. And then we have the, the last one, uh, the agents actually running on them to enforce policies. Uh, goes along with the monitoring tool agents. But you can have both. I mean, sometimes you can have a BMC plus. You also have these agents from these third-party tools I'm sure over the next couple months, Quest and AppPoint will talk about um, you know, their, their solutions. But you'll have uh, agents for those, those tools also running on 
your front ends typically. Okay. And that's to enforce things such as policies. Okay. Uh, we use uh, we use a Quest tool and uh, we have agents on our on our front ends and uh, again they don't take up a lot of space. But again, it's something more you got to plan out for. And the big one, really, for large medium to large scale enterprises, is your front end query servers. If you're doing, uh, you know, indexing these these uh, large scale enterprise uh, farms, you know, you're getting into one million plus indexed items, uh, you know, two million and so forth. These can get to be very large files. Okay, and especially you're getting your incremental updates keeps adding on and on. Uh, you're getting up to 50 gigs more than that uh, before the actual compressed on down. Uh, and you could get up over the 100 gig mark for something in the millions of items that are actually indexed. Okay. I think we were up to uh, about 1.4 just a little while ago. That was the last count I had, 1.4 million items. And I use on like a partly reduced. And I think it's still taking up, oh, I think 20 something gigs. Um, so I mean, you can get. Uh, if you have the full indexing with uh, you know a couple million items, you're, you're starting to get up over 50 gigs of space taken up on the front end and on your indexing. So you're going to need, I just mentioned the, the query servers there, you're going to need that space available to you. Do you recommend any kind of disk partition to protect the space for your logs or your index or do you just have it? We, we, I have them spread out. I do like them partitioned. Uh, the ones for the the actual the CI files for the, the search indexes that are pushed out, you're going to have that as typically sand based so that you can actually expand that as you know, as your farm grows and grows. Um, the more partitions, I like the more partitions for the front ends specifically. Um, for, we'll talk a little bit about the SQL server. Uh, I don't always like as many. And I'll tell you the reason behind that. Um, the IIS logs, uh, we don't run IIS logs for every web application. Um, I think it's a good practice to do it actually. I would like to do it, but again, when we built this, we didn't build in for enough space on the local drives to where we want to keep them. Um, we've had some SAN connection issues in the past. But these take up a lot of space if you're looking at highly used websites in a large enterprise. If you're getting, like I said, in the morning you get 10 to 20,000 users using one of our web applications, uh, the IS logs for that one web application is going to be huge. And example I just did down there, that was, I think that was for one day, uh, for one web application, 140 megs. Uh, that wasn't the big one. That's, that's kind of our middle of the road. Uh, our big one, would, which we don't run it on, would probably be at least three times the size of that. Do you um, use your logs at all for capacity planning, or, or do you use your logs at all for capacity planning? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have a tool that you like for that? Or um, capacity planning. Well, we use well, the the Quest tool. Okay. Just, just and, and, and we do reports and, and trends, and we monitor the trends with the Quest tool. Uh, and that's kind of how we're looking at things. So what typically I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Quest reports once a week. I tend to do that, hand it off to the business team. They look at them and then we get together and we go over them typically the ones every other week. And, and we look at those trends and what's happening. Um, good example, we took on, uh, we added about 6,500 users to the environment over the last couple of months. And we're going to be adding them up. You know, it keeps growing and growing and growing as we expand out into our stores, and the stores all add users uh, to this environment. And so uh, we try to keep on top of those trends. Unfortunately, like I said, if we had planned it out properly, planned that sand storage properly, things would be much easier in my life if I had a plan out um, sizing on both. The, the vocal drives and how the how it hooked into the sand and the stand sand growth. Uh, 
I'd be in a lot better shape than I am today. Um, one of the things we want to do here with these large uh, logs is uh, we want to rotate and zip the IS logs on a daily or weekly basis. I'd say daily, uh, just in case of corruption. Uh, weekly can be for those less lesser used sites. Um, you know, we talked about PowerShell in here and using it. I use it for this type of task. Um, I typically take the event viewer uh, information on a it's on a weekly basis. I guess I could do it more, but uh, on a weekly basis, I will um, use the PowerShell. I'll, I'll extract it, zip it up for the application, the security, and the system uh, event viewer logs. And so I'll do that on a regular basis. And uh, PowerShell is really great for that, I've found. And uh, again, the larger the size, the more often you're going to want to do this. And also, this is great for um, if, if debugging again. We're talking in the debugging area. If, if, if the more you have of those logs and the more detailed they are, it's so much easier to debug when you can see the same errors over and over and then uh, on a daily basis if you're, if you're looking at it. Um, utilize these logs on a separate server to reduce CPU processing. Typically, when if we're going to be doing, um, we're actually going to be doing running the ports and that on the logs, we're going to try to move those off typically onto another server. And plus, we use uh, any type of uh, utilities like an app point or a quest, we'll have that on a, a separate server too. So, you know, you want to take things out of your production environment, do them off to the side. I mean, if you're, you're having 10,000, you don't want to put more load on your servers, obviously. So, to analyze the logs, typically we will take them and move them. Again, the more things you can do through you know, your batch files or your offshore people to move these things around, um, get them off your front ends if you can, if you can do that, that would be great um, because it's going to reduce that CPU process. What special tool you use to analyze it? Well, I, I, use, uh, I use the Quest tool. For, it actually gathers its own type of logs and puts them in a database, a repository it's called, and then it just runs from there. I don't actually run the, um, I, don't, I don't like use like a, uh, like a web trends on this. Uh, we use that on our internet servers. We'll grab the logs and we'll put them on a different server, zip them up, put them on a different server, and then analyze through the web trends. Uh, that's a good log to analyze into what we've used anyways. Um, but typically, I don't I don't analyze the IIS logs from there because not all all of our web applications actually use IIS logs at this time. Um, actually, the other one I think one of our applications uses the Google Analytics. I actually we do use that in one of the applications. Um, the event viewer logs, the, uh, large size logs. Uh, Good example is the security uh, event viewer log. It typically maxes out uh, the ones I've seen on mine anyways about 192 megs. Uh, so you want to take those out, uh, compress them, zip them up, put them in, put them in a different spot, um, and have that routinely done because they fill up very fast. Obviously, uh, use those for debugging, and again, uh, talk about using those for which hotfixes or CPUs are required. Um, we don't put, we were putting, I guess, the CUs on a regular basis, we were putting them on. Uh, we don't anymore, we just put the ones that we obviously were having issues with. Uh, again, it comes kind of down for us anyways, in that 365 uh, day environment and 24 hours a day, um, we can't have a lot of downtime and we don't want a lot of processing happening add all these CUs on all the time, rebooting them. Uh, what we were doing in the past had been uh, just doing this on weekends. Even weekends now, uh, it's so so well used our environment, we don't even like taking it down for that long in the, uh, on the weekends. So again, that's something you have to get used to when you're in a large environment versus a smaller one. Uh, you have to, that so much usage, you have to kind of plan for that. Um, zip all the logs, we mentioned that throughout. 
uh, it really does provide a lot of good information. Uh, it talks about the warnings and the errors, and we use the PowerShell to help move the files and add dates for renaming the files. So we keep everything very well organized. Again, if we have a problem, business area comes to us and says, you know, we had this starting last week, so we can go, okay, what day, what time, oh, at this time, this day, we can go back through, look at our event viewer logs, look at our ULS logs, compare things, uh, review them, and then we can set out for a plan to correct that. The ULS log.